So ImageLine just recently dropped FL Studio 20.6, and in this video, I wanna go over why the new Destructor Effects plugin is possibly the best effects plugin inside of FL Studio. So FL Studio has four different tiers. I'm actually only on their second tier, which is the Producer Edition, which is their $200 tier. And then for $100 more, you have their Signature Edition. However, their highest edition is hundreds and hundreds of dollars more than the edition above this one. That edition includes all of ImageLine's flagship plugins like Harmer, SAR, Sakura, and so on and so forth. So for the first time ever, this plugin right here, Destructor, actually brings a lot of those elements into the lower editions of FL Studio. If you go to the bottom drop-down menu, it has different presets. And the distortion, for example, utilizes distortion algorithms from Harmer, which is their top of the line synthesizer. So now you could bring Harmer-like flavors into lower versions of FL Studio and add these effects onto any of your plugins. So Destructor is a four module effects unit. It has distortion, filters, a chorus, and a speaker simulation. And you can see you could rearrange these with the left and right arrows at the bottom of each effects module. You can also switch these up by hitting this drop down menu at the top and you could switch from distortion, filter, chorus, and speaker. You can also enable or disable any of these effects with this button here. Before, really the only types of distortion that I had access to with the stock plugins inside of the producer edition of FL Studio were just Blood Overdrive, which is one of my favorites, Fast Distortion, and the Soft Clipper. But in addition to these Harmer presets, we also have a Wave Folder, which is actually a little different from the Wave Shaper in FL Studio, Aperture, Abrasive, and a Bit Crusher. So now we have quite a few different distortion algorithms and flavors that we could add to our plugins, specifically flavors from their top of the line synth, which makes just this one module alone a very big deal for FL Studio users. So even if you had the highest edition, this one plugin unit is still gold because now you have an easier way to access some of the coloration and saturation that you would get inside of Harmer and apply that to your other plugins without having to resample or resynthesize those sounds. This speaker module adds on to that with different speaker cabinets, and these are great for guitars and synthesizers. And you'll see a lot of these presets are derived from their hardcore effects plugin, but to have these combined in one effects rack makes it a lot more convenient than even before. And then you have the filter. So many of you know, FL Studio just came out with a new plugin called Flex, and inside of Flex, they have a plethora of filters that you can use to reshape the frequencies of your sounds. And if you've seen my previous tutorials, you know how much I emphasize the importance of filters when it comes to the quality of a synth. And here in the drop-down menu, you could see all the different filters that were originally inside of Flex, but now we have access to these filters to place on any of our sounds. Everything from a simple low pass, to comb filters, to phasers. Now we just have a lot more ability inside of one effects unit to reshape our sounds and to add different tones that were definitely a lot more difficult to get without a plugin like Destructor. So it's great to not be restricted to only using Flex to access these type of filters. And last but not least, you have this chorus, which makes sense because chorus sounds great on a lot of plugins that utilize distortion and speaker cabinets like guitars and synths. So it definitely makes sense to have a chorus unit inside of this effects rack as well. Before this plugin came out, my favorite effects unit inside of FL Studio was actually Fruity Love Filter. And again, it was mainly because of the filtering. But let me show you a problem that Fruity Love Filter has compared to Destructor. So if I mute Destructor here and I load up Fruity Love Filter and say, for example, I want to access the specific filters inside of Fruity Love Filter. So let's just switch to Mango Low Pass, which is one of my favorites. Hopefully they add Mango Low Pass into Destructor in the future. As of right now, it, the Low Pass filters it has are Low Pass 6, 12, Alternate 12, and Alternate 24. And I believe those are referring to Lime Low Pass and their Vanilla Low Pass, so Low Pass 1 and 2. So again, I would like to see Mango Low Pass to be included in Destructor as well in the future, along with these dual, triple, alt, dual, and alt, triple modes as well, besides just the alt mode. So here I have Mini Synth loaded. 
And you'll notice when I activate Fruity Love Filter, we'll get the filtering. However, when I go into Fruity Love Filter and I want to adjust any of these settings, we no longer have sound. The keys on your MIDI controller are actually switched over to the different settings inside of Fruity Love Filter instead of playing the keys on your synth. I've mentioned in a previous video, one of the workarounds to avoid this is to actually just load Fruity Love Filter inside of a patcher and that will get Fruity Love Filter to completely ignore your keystrokes on your MIDI controller and you'll still be able to and you'll still be able to play your VSTI as you adjust these settings inside of Fruity Love Filter. But inside of Destructor, that's not an issue at all. So according to YouTube, the next video you should watch is here on your left. And if you like this video, you should definitely check out the video on your right as well. I make new videos every week, so remember to turn on notifications so that you are notified every time I drop a new video. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.